Good evening. I'm John Batchelor. The presidential contest joined by Donald Trump within these last hours. In addition to that, 24 hours ago, joined by Jeb Bush, former governor of Florida. And over the weekend, Mrs. Clinton making it formal on Roosevelt Island, which is a small piece of land between Manhattan and Brooklyn and Queens. It's neither Manhattan or Brooklyn and Queens. It is an unusual setting. And Larry Kudlow of Kudlow Report and Kudlow Radio on the weekend joins me as my colleague and co-host. And Larry and I will speak of the several presidential candidates over these last days and all the other candidates watching this. However, we begin tonight with remarks on the economy after I bid good evening to Larry and ask him why Donald Trump, why now, with all of these serious candidates on the stage, why Mr. Trump enters with the energy of a showman, not the policy of a president. Good evening to you, Larry. Good evening, John. Well, you know, I think Trump has a low regard for these candidates. Now, that's his view, not mine. I tend to agree with you. They're very serious bunch and it's a good deep bench but i you know i watched this speech and i watched the tv interview uh earlier tonight and you know he doesn't express any respect for the group running he feels america's problems are gigantic across the board the politicians can't solve them the lobbyists and the bureaucrats get in the way and only he can do it only he can do it and he really is sort of america first that was what comes through he's america first question is, how did he get there, and what experience he has, and what's his positive program? And we really haven't heard a positive program. Um, he was devastatingly uh, protectionist and hostile uh, to Mexico, uh, to China, um, to Europe, uh, to immigrants, immigration, uh, really, really hostile stuff, very protectionist stuff. And I don't think that flies. Uh, he wants to end the war, you know, he wants to bomb ISIS into the ground. He won't talk about putting extra troops in. In other words, he wants America to win, John, but he's really not given enough thought, if you ask me so far, as to how to do it. But make no mistake, Donald Trump, in a debate, will be dangerous. And he's going to shake things up, and he's going to keep the others on their toes. We'll speak of the others, and now we turn to speak of the economy that Donald Trump enjoys and has been a great success in all these years, which is why he's now a presidential candidate. The May unemployment report, the May employment report, was very strong. And that immediately suggests that things are getting better. So we welcome Phil Izzo, who has the opportunity each month to stand and take the pummeling of a poor economic report. And now he enjoys the applause of a good economic report. The messenger enjoys both opprobrium and adulation. And tonight, Phil, you enjoy. It's finally paid off. That May employment report seems to have impressed everyone. Does, does this indicate that there's hiring in important areas like manufacturing and and construction. Does it, is this indicate that all the numbers are good? Good evening to you, Phil. Uh, good evening, John. I, I think we got some good numbers all around, some very broad strength across the economy, which is always good to see. Um, the unemployment uh, rate didn't move too much, but the number of hiring continued to increase, conti- increased strongly when we were really worried that things were going to slow down significantly after some bad months earlier in the year. It looks like spring sprung well. Um, and we've seen some other good numbers, too. We've seen some broad-based good retail numbers that we just got recently. We had uh, numbers on construction today that were down a little bit, but we had a real gangbusters number last month, and that wasn't totally erased today. So we were seeing a, a lot of better news in the last couple of weeks. Well, okay. I, you know, I, of course I agree with you. I mean, the jobs numbers were good. Retail sales uh, were better. Industrial production was not um, That's an important number, by the way, manufacturing. Those were down. But you know, Phil, the sense I have is that, okay, the first quarter, for many reasons, uh, really uh, understated the economy. The second quarter, it's going to look a little better, and maybe in the third quarter. But I I just think we're moving sideways. We're in this sort of 2.5% zone. I think the stock market's moving sideways because the economy is moving sideways. And I think uh, analysts are worried whether profits are going to go up or down, or they're going to move sideways. In other words, not much is going on. I, you know, you look at the market every day, and 
and um, you know CNBC and the others try to parse together what's going. Not much is really happening here, and there's sort of the stasis that I don't know how it's going to break, but I don't I don't see it jumping out. Yeah, I mean the, it's funny you mentioned that about the markets. We had a stat in the journal the other day that we've crossed the flat line from the beginning of the year something like 19 times since the beginning of the, the year and the most that's ever happened. So basically we're, we're around where we finished uh, 2014 and we've been stuck there for this whole year. And I think you're right about the economy too, that we, things are looking, we, you know, what the good news is we were really worried when we saw that contraction number in the first quarter. The economy fell and that's never a good thing to see. You worry if that's something that is, is endemic to the economy or if it was just a, a one-time event. We, it looks like that's not the case. It looks like it was, was a one-time event. It looks like it's not an underlying weakness. But we are going sideways, and which has been the story of this recovery from 2009 onwards. I mean, we, we've really, oh, we're always worried, waiting to, to break out, to break out, to break out. And we've been stuck in this 2 to 3% zone for years. So yeah, we come. That I couldn't agree more. One, one other thing, um, ever the eternal optimist, um, I still believe somewhere out there, Phil, is going to be a bigger jump in consumer spending and, and, and activity in retail sales. Not necessarily business investment, because I, I think there's a confidence problem there. But, you know, when you look at the in- incomes adjusted for inflation and taxes are growing at close to 4%, and you, you have zero inflation, you have lower energy prices, maybe not as low as they were, but <laughs> they're still down 45%. Now, there's a real income effect that could lead to better spending. That's what I'm waiting for that might, you know, wake people up this summer. Yeah, I mean, I think that's it, it, there's lots of reasons for that to happen. I mean, like you said, incomes have been growing, wages are finally up, the job market is strong, people are coming back from being on the sidelines. I, I think there's still a hangover from this recession that is affecting people's mentality, and I it, it's, it's seems like there's it's going to take a real boost of strong growth for a sustained period to I think unleash that. To its full potential, but I think we, sh- we at least should see some improvement in the next couple of months. Gentlemen, you, you know that Janet Yellen is holding a press conference tomorrow, the two-day Fed, and here's the question everybody's waiting. There won't be a hike tomorrow. That seems to be a uniform expectation from the analysts I've read. But there will be remarks about the direction the Fed will take the remaining a year, when there's going to be one hike or two. What is the path, I'm told, the path of the rates uh, going forward? And uh, I ask now, just here, because we'll come back and talk about this at length, are there any, is there anything in the number that suggests that the Fed is going to be a uh, change from Mrs. Yellen's word gradual? I'll ask you first, Phil, and then you, Larry. Gradual, is that the, is that the watchword tomorrow with these stronger numbers? Yeah, I mean, she's, she's has had some, she's been clear relatively recently about the fact that she thinks the economy is going to improve and that they think we're ready for rate hikes and all this all this stuff, but at heart, Janet Yellen is a dove, and she is very worried that we are in this the, the sideways economy that Larry and I were talking right. about earlier. She's very concerned about that, and I think there's no way that she's going to start sounding incredibly hawkish anytime soon. So she'll use the word gradual tomorrow. Do you believe, Larry? Oh, I do. I I surely agree with with Phil on this. Look, I my own sense is that look, the Fed wants to raise rates. Right. They must raise rates. The, the view is after six years, you can't have a zero Fed funds rate. I mean, you could theoretically, but she's going to try to cook up arguments, and she's going to you know, tell the markets rate hikes are coming. Um, it's going to be at the pace, John, of an injured snail. That's the way I look at it. And the only issue here is timing. And I don't know how important that is. Some people in the market think it's very important. Others don't. And the range is, you know, September uh, out to the end of the year. Let me just lob this in as we go to our break. There is a Fed meeting in July, okay? There is a Fed meeting in July. And it is not completely out of the question that they might raise the target rate by a quarter of a percentage point. June, July, and then again in September. Is that the rate, Larry? And then in August, everybody goes somewhere out west and talks. It could be July and then not until December. Right. Uh, But I just think, I don't know, Phil, you may disagree. This is a non-analytic point. This is a belly point, a gut point. Somehow or other, they want to get that first one under their belt. All right, we'll come back about that, because I'm also told to ask you two gentlemen about the tone of the remarks that the FOMC meeting will issue tomorrow. 
tone as well as Ms. Uh, Janet Yellen's remarks about how many rates uh, increases this year. Larry Kudlow and Phil Izzo of the Wall Street Journal. Larry Kudlow of CNBC and Kudlow Radio on the weekend. I'm John Batchelor.